Hey guys and welcome to the second part of my silent video editing PC. Uh, if you haven't watched the first part which is uh, the silent or the noise test, uh, I will post uh, beneath the, the video description or in the video description I'll post a link. If you want to take a closer look on each of the components, I will put it uh, as well on the description. If you are here for the benchmarks and real world testing, uh, especially in After Effects and Adobe Premiere, uh, stick around and we will start with it okay so let's go for the presentation that I made in PowerPoint so I don't uh, lose myself and so what we are going to check will be uh, quickly the specs and then the prices temperatures power consumption uh, after effects rendering times first generation uh, i7 which was the one that I had I had as I mentioned the i7 960 uh, versus now the 4770K. Uh, and then we will check After Effects Ray Tracing and Adobe Premiere Rendering Times CPU and um, with GTS 760. And uh, lastly, we will have some synthetic benchmarks. So this is what uh, we are going to see in this video. If it interests, uh, interests you, uh, keep with us. If not, just <laughs> jump to something else that you are looking for. Okay, so... Let's go for the specs. If you want to take a closer look, just pause the video and you can uh, check all the components that are here. And as I said before, uh, there will be links uh, beneath uh, for each of uh, these components, uh, closer overview. Let's move on. So the prices, uh, this one is unformatted. <laughs> Sorry about that, it's supposed to be here. But regarding the prices, the total, once again, if you want to check closer, just pause the video. The total is 1,455 uh, euros, which uh, is somewhere around 2,000 uh, US dollars. Uh, I put these numbers here just uh, for your consideration. If you don't have this amount available right now, but if you want to get uh, a capable machine of video editing um, at the moment with upgradability uh, capability, uh, what I would have done would uh, gone to 60, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, which I would save 150 euros. Uh, I could have gone with just the integrated graphics uh, for working um, and forget about ray tracing uh, in this case, but you would save 250 uh, euros and the drop Adobe Premiere rendering times would increase uh, a little bit. Um, if <laughs> you don't mind working with the mechanical hard drive, you could have saved uh, at least 100 euros here and in the power supply which i'm really happy with it uh, but if you don't mind noise which i do <laughs> you could have saved here uh, around 100 euros again so we are talking about uh, four six one two four five six hundred euros of savings that you could on the future uh, upgrade let's move on so starting with temperatures and before i start let me bring this um, up here the 8 of 64 just to show you just to show you um, how did i read the temps so when you see uh, this uh, value here uh, the temperature that i was looking for was here on the cpu and these here which I call them the cores, is the, the, the maximum temperature that I got on each uh, core. So for instance, if I was reading the temperature now, I would place here 43, which is the highest uh, that I was getting. Bear in mind that, uh, as you can see, I've got lots of application uh, uh, loaded and I've got uh, a large RAM preview on After Effects, so the CPU is working a little bit, uh, or did work <laughs> a little bit harder and also the DRAM as you can see, but we will check that uh, in a minute. So just to let you know how I read the temperatures. So in IDL, without recording, which I'm using Camtasia Studio, without recording, gave me temperatures of 27 degrees and on the course, uh, 29 degrees. While recording, I was getting uh, 33 degrees which is something around what I'm getting right now. 
and to be honest, uh, Camtasia takes <laughs> takes a bit of of your uh, CPU. So uh, exactly more or less what I'm getting right now, 36, and on the course around 45. And then in After Effects, I was getting 45 uh, degrees while rendering, and on the course 57. Rendering, uh, rendering. Sorry, not rendering, but using the stress test. Uh, benchmark Prime 95, I was getting temperatures of 59 and on the cores I was getting 70, the highest. So this is uh, with your CPU on stock. Uh, no overclock at this point, just on stock. Let's go to the next uh, <coughs> next board. And in here I could overclock up to 4.6 on two cores and 4. Uh, five on two, so I decided, and as I said on the first video, um, I decided to put all of them in 4.5. So the temperatures in Idle were around the same while recording the same. After Effects, it jumped a little bit uh, to 62 and highest on 78, and on Prime 95, uh, 75 degrees and 85 on course. So here, uh, these numbers here are getting a bit higher. But as I said, this is uh, a <laughs> really demanding stress test. Uh, for me, what interests me is this value here, After Effects rendering, which is the, the one that I take, uh, or the one that I use uh, on, on real world. Uh, I'm not using Prime95 for, <laughs> for anything unless a stress test. So After Effects temperatures seem uh, quite good on 78 uh, maximum. And then we have the power consumption um, usage. So in here, once again, uh, the stock CPU, uh, 3.5 to 3.9, and no GTX 760. Bear in mind that, uh, as I mentioned on the first video, um, without a graphics card, the CPU wouldn't go higher than 3.6. Uh, when I insert the graphics card, it would go uh, to 3.9. Uh, so, uh, while uh, not recording, I was getting a uh, power consumption of 50 watts uh, on needle, And then recording once again with Camtasia, uh, I was getting 57 watts. Uh, and in After Effects rendering, I was getting 100 watts of power consumption. And with Prime 95, I was getting around 127 watts. So everything on stock and no graphics card here. Now, power consumption with uh, the CPU on stock and uh, the graphics card uh, working. So, as you can see, the values in Idle without recording 62, Idle recording 70, After Effects rendering 150, so we got a little jump here, and then on Prime 95, uh, 200 watts. Unigine Valley was the one that could push the graphics card and uh, it drew 560 watts which is, <laughs> is huge, but uh, as I said on the other video as well, I couldn't he hear the, the power supply working. I could hear the, the, the graphics card, as I've shown you on the test uh, of noise on the first video. If you haven't checked, just go there and see that. Uh, but that was it, just the graphics card and <laughs> 560 watts on this uh, benchmark Unigine Valley. And let's move on to power consumption with the CPU overclocked. No changes in Idle. After Effects rendering and Prime 95, no changes. As you can see, uh, 150 and 200 uh, watts, so no, no changes there. And on um, uh, Unigine, the same value as well. So uh, <laughs> in here, there's no difference in... Uh, uh, with overclocked or without or stock while using the GTX 760 um, as we saw uh, earlier. So let's, uh, oh, let me just uh, mention something that I found curious. I run Unigine in one screen and run Unigine on three screens. And I'll post a video here, just, uh, just a small preview for you to check. Um, curious thing is that the wattage uh, usage was exactly the same running one screen and running three screens. I was expecting a little bit more of the graphics card ex uh, using wattages, but um, it didn't. 
So I was uh, using more energy of the monitors, of course, uh, I'm aware of that, but the graphics card was not uh, using uh, more wattages. So, and let's move on. So now, After Effects rendering times uh, and the After Effects template that I used is one of mine, the Dramatic Film Strip Photos, which I can uh, post a link with the, the preview and uh, just make a, a small video here. Uh, with my old CPU, it took 47 minutes rendering, and now with the 4770K, it takes 25 minutes rendering. Settings, all the same, no changes, just uh, rendering. So we got somewhere around the 46% uh, increase from the first generation CPU to the fourth generation with 16 gig gigabytes of RAM. Now with 32 gigabytes of RAM, <laughs> as you can see, the time is exactly the same, 25 minutes. So you can ask, um, why would I want 32 gigabytes instead of the um, instead of the 16? Why should I spend more 150 euros? Um, and the answer is simple, but I will have to show you in one second. And then just a comparison to finish up this screen. Overclocked at 4.5, it took me 22 minutes instead of the 25. So here, uh, I don't see much, much, much advantage in overclocking at 4.5 and that was one of the reasons that I down clocked to 4.2 as you saw on the on the first uh, part of this of this video if you haven't once again <laughs> go there and check it um, so performance and noise I could get mine at 4.2 and uh, without seeing for example if it took 15 minutes instead of the 25 I would have to, to think about that but three minutes uh, it's not not bad uh, this will all depend on the template that you are working. If it's a template that takes 16 hours, probably with 4.5, it will take, uh, I don't know, 12 hours, and that's uh, that's uh, that's <laughs> three hours difference. It's much, but in this uh, template case, um, it's not. So, if you are wondering uh, about the RAM usage here, let's just see something. Uh, let me bring up this. So at the moment I'm using 85% of my 32 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and here's, here's the difference. I'm going to put on screen this After Effects template here, designed by me, created by me, <laughs> and it's available if you want to. I will leave the link on the description. I've got a full RAM preview here. So let's imagine I'm working this on a customization for a client and um, I'm ready to render. So After Effects will take, while rendering, will take uh, somewhere around the 26 gigabytes of RAM uh, usage. Or it will take your 16 or 14 uh, gigabytes of RAM. Um, why, before, before I go further, let me just say something. that why, When I did these tests um, with 16 and 32 gigabytes of RAM, I wasn't doing anything else on the, on the PC. So I just left it render and checked the final um, final result times. So uh, if I was working in other applications at the same time that it was rendering, those 16 gigabytes of RAM for sure uh, would not have taken the same time as the 32 gigabytes of RAM. And as you can see here, I'm using 85%. So to give you a, a, a more detailed uh, example, Let's say that I start running this project and I want to keep working on another customization project for a client, as I have on my left screen here. Uh, that will improve the workflow that I have available uh, to work with. Or if you are working in a Photoshop file, or if you are working with, um, on your, uh, I don't know, changing a vector. So you have background rendering after effects or uh, Adobe Premiere and so you have a lot of things going on your PC, on your PC and you cannot notice um, the lack of RAM. So the great advantages or, uh, or the best advantage of having uh, 32 gigabytes of RAM is if you are constantly working in, which is my case, um, or I'm working on my project or I'm working in a customization project for a client and uh, after a few minutes it appears appears a new client uh, and give me some more work and what do I do? Uh, I don't stop, I'm running one and changing the other one 
uh, reading emails on one screen, <laughs> the responding to support tickets on the other screen, and that's my usual workflow. So 32 gigabytes for me, it's not an overkill. Um, for you, you will have to think uh, what is your usage. Uh, if you don't mind uh, putting the, the template rendering or your video uh, rendering and go for a beer, <laughs> come back later, that's okay, 16, even 8, you could get away with it. Uh, 32 is only if you have a workflow that, uh, as I, I explained here, um, it's not easy. So let me just show you now if, um, so we are with 27 gigabytes of RAM usage. If I close this project here, let's see how, no, I will have to close After Effects because it's on cache for sure. So now it went to 14%. We were at uh, 80 something. I don't recall, but you can uh, go back to see. And now we are at 14%. So this is the, the best example that I can give you uh, about uh, overkill on your RAM, uh, 32 gigabytes or uh, 16 gigabytes. So this will be a decision that you will have to uh, to take in consideration and, and, uh, and make it. So let me just close this. We don't need this anymore. At least I think we don't. And let's go to our next screen, which is, okay, After Effects CS6 Ray Tracing. And in here, we will have to go live. I've got a project here, very simple project that I made uh, just for this test. So it's taking a while to to handle and this is because, let me put this on screen. Okay, so we are using, I'll put this back in a minute. If I go to file, okay, I can't go to file because the CPU was maxed out that's because we are working with the cpu only uh, so this will be interesting if i move my time this is a very simple animation if i move my timeline uh, it will show me this fast preview but once i drop my needle see what happens with the cpu at the moment I, i've done clock it to four uh, gigabyte uh, gigahertz so it's a hundred percent and now it back so if i go once again if i want to, <laughs> to preview and put it on 16 seconds the cpu will really work hard um, to get this done so as you can see here this is unbearable to work you cannot make um, a stop somewhere around here and take all this time to to preview and uh, I will change to the GTX 760 so you can see the difference. But let's try something. If I try to make uh, a RAM preview. And that's my kid. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear it, but he's playing on the, the corridor. So it takes a lot, a lot um, to... As you can see, the CPU is maxed out. Even with the 4.5 that I tried, uh, it's impossible. So that's one of, one of the reasons that I want to improve my uh, ray tracing capabilities. Now let's change this to the GPU. That's going to take a while. Press OK. OK. Still on CPU. Yeah, thinking. So this transition from CPU to uh, to the GTX 760, it's going to always take a while, or the inverse. So because it has to make some calculations, but once uh, you leave it on on GPU, you will have no no problem at all. So now it has finished uh, processing, and let's see the difference. <laughs> Can you see the difference? <laughs> Once I drop my needle, uh, I've got it rendered. 
instantaneous. And, and bear in mind that this is a very simple pro uh, project. It's just one extruded text on ray tracing, as you can see on the screen here. Um, nothing special, nothing, nothing, nothing. So, and the CPU wasn't able to, to handle it correctly, while the graphics card, G GTX 760, uh, can work with it uh, quite well. And can you see the RAM preview now? Before we had this line here, you can go back the video to check that out. We had a line here, uh, the CPU was working very, very hard. Now, let me bring this back. CPU is only about 20% and the RAM preview or the RAM preview is going much, much faster. So you can, you can actually work like this with ray tracing. Uh, <coughs> Only with the CPU wasn't, uh, you couldn't, as you saw, you couldn't. So this is a great example where the GTX 760 uh, comes in hand. So I'm really happy <laughs> uh, with this one here. So let me close this one and let's go to Adobe Premiere rendering times. Okay, so what I did was a 12 minute uh, video, just one layer and with three effects curves sharpen and fast uh, color correction uh, let me open the file which is premiere render test so you can see um, what i have here so it was one of my uh, videos uh, with just one camera and um, if i go to the effects oh here it is fast color corrector sharpen and rgb curves so these were uh, it looks like i was asleep there <laughs> these were the effects that um, I used to test it out so let's close now and let's see the results so just the CPU working 38 minutes um, on this particular file uh, CPU with the option of OpenCL on the uh, iGPU no GTX at this moment uh, took 32 minutes rendering so an improvement and then with the GTX 760, 19 minutes, and with the CPU overclocked, it took uh, 16 minutes. So we have some improvement. And with this example, you can uh, then make your uh, decisions to, to see <laughs> whether it's an overkill or not, or if you want to overclock it or it's not worth it. So moving on, Geekbench. So these were the results that um, I got. No need to read them, just you can watch them. And as a comparison, I can give you all my tests. I tested on Geekbench 2 because I have all my tests there. I have my Mac Mini here. I've got my laptop here. This is my wife's laptop, only for PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> Not good for anything else. Uh, this was my uh, first generation CPU, the 960. <laughs> And then I have the 4770K uh, non-overclocked and the overclocked here. So you can pause the video to s see it better. Let's go back to our presentation. And in here the same if you want to check the values, just pause the video and you are it. And then on Cinebench, once again, these were the results of the, the CPU. Results, sorry, CPU. And this was the test of the GTX 760 on Cinebench, 141 frames per second, and was withdrawing 300 watts. And that's it. So, <laughs> guys, uh, I'm happy that I could, could put all this together uh, for you to, to compare. And um, I hope that I could share with you some valid information about the, the system that I have here, and that will help you in the future too. Uh, build your own system and to make uh, fair comparisons with uh, what you've got at the moment and what you expect uh, for your future, especially video editing PC. Uh, of course, you can play games on this on this machine. And in fact, uh, I'm even afraid of testing because <laughs> I was a World War uh, World of Warcraft player <laughs> a few years ago, and I still buy every expansion, but I cannot play, especially that game because. And then no work done uh, but my point is uh, this is a capable machine of uh, gaming um, so 
see what you need if, if it's for just editing, if it's for gaming, and take from these um, two videos that I made, once with the noise and this one with the, the benchmarks, take, take uh, something from here. Well, at least I expect that you can take something from here. And I'm going to shut up now. We are already with 25 minutes, some, something around that. And guys, thanks for watching the video. If you liked uh, these videos, please thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Uh, subscribe if you like this kind of videos and my other After Effects and video editing tips. And I'll be giving <laughs> some news. Ask some some questions if you if you need to, I don't know, clarify something that I didn't uh, mention. And that's it. My name is Roberto George and bye-bye. Thanks for watching.